Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Moon. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast is a result of my desire to build better humans, unequivocal coaches, and autonomous athletes. I've spent the last several years obsessing over program design, nutrition, and every other way you can optimize human performance. This podcast distills the latest scientific research with what I've learned and blends it with the not-so-scientific field of mental toughness. We are here to build you into a dangerously effective athlete. If you enjoy this podcast, you can find out more about our training at garagegymathlete.com. And if you want to pursue more into the field of coaching and programming, head to endof3fitness.com. Thanks for listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? Hey. And we have Al Brook, the OG athlete, man. How's it going? Yeah, g'day, fellas. Going well down here in uh, Australia. Yeah, we got we had a request for more international athletes, and this just we didn't seek anyone out. It just happened to not gonna lie, yeah. it was it was uh, knocking on old doors. It was fate. And uh, you know, I'm happy to have you back, Al, so we can kind of hash out just your progress and, uh, you know, how things have been and, and all that, but we'll get started just for anyone who hasn't, uh, you know, not familiar with you or, or your background, who, you, uh, I like to say who you are, but people normally just say their name again. I already said your name. So what do you do for a living and how do you train? Uh, well, uh, for a living, uh, I, uh, I run a software company. Um, it's actually an interesting story. It's when I only started this up, well, we officially launched it about three weeks ago now. Nice. Um, but been working on that as a project since November of last year. Um, so, yeah, interesting time to start a business. Um, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, so my background is um, is IT, I guess, um, mainly commercial IT. So work for a, a bunch of different companies, um, mainly around Australia, but have uh, – done some time in, in the fabulous United States as well as around the place. Um, how do I train? In a garage, of course. Um, <laughs> been a long time garage athlete. Um, probably all up, I think, training in the garage, I think it's about 10 years now. I started off with a single kettlebell about 10 years ago uh, and a bit of running and then uh, sort of uh, got started got probably more serious about it to about three years ago. Um, and uh, after a, a, a serious illness, I, uh, I, w- I was pretty weak and, and deconditioned and so uh, uh, managed to convince my wife to invest in some, uh, some, some weights and a couple of squat stands and uh, kind of went from there and about uh, a year of training on my own in the garage seriously and then uh, – to garage gym athlete and it's been it's almost two years to the day nice we should do we should start doing a garage gym birthday. athlete birthday <laughs> podcast yeah like yeah try and nail people down on their garage gym athlete anniversaries uh well that's that's really cool man and i know so anybody who hasn't um heard previous podcasts without i mean i do definitely he's just shared such good information and he also does in the group um so someone awesome to communicate with in our community in general so definitely go back and listen to those podcast episodes uh and uh if you're in the community be sure to to interact with al he's always got some he's always ahead of us you know he's always he can always like in the future no yeah he, right. he's always like hey just so everyone knows that hard hard to kill workout today kind of sucks and uh yeah, I'm always, a few in there occasionally yeah and it's much appreciated, man. So, um, let's go over, I, I want to start, I definitely want to rehash some of the questions and, and get an update, but I would love to hear how, you know, you went from, you said mentioning being kind of like having a sickness and having to come back from that to now, like we have a lot of, uh, metrics and data on you. You've shared a lot with us, how you've progressed. I would love to just kind of hear about that story and progressions of going from, you know, feeling like you need to do something about rebounding to today. You know, I know that's a big thing to unpack, but I would love for you to just kind of talk about uh, how you stay consistent yeah. over that time frame. I guess, is, is a big thing I'm interested in because um, that's one thing I think is, is uh, 
you know, great and fascinating about you and our community is like, you've just been, um, hammering it out. Like sometimes we don't hear from you for a while and I'm like, what, where's Al? And then you'll, you'll post. I'm like, oh yeah, he's, he's still like, he's still doing it, man. So I'd love to hear just kind of about how things have gone for you over the last couple of years, training alone for the most part and, and all that. Yeah. Well, um, I guess from the start, I mean, I've always, I've always been, uh, right into fitness. Um, I played rugby for many years, uh, much like Craig Lewis. Um, but I, I played in a real position. Uh, <laughs> he's a prop from the scrum. You know, playing at the, at the back of the scrum and, uh, in the centers, I, you know, we, we do all the, all of the work. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, look after, after, uh, probably 15 years or so of, of playing, uh, rugby pretty seriously and, and, and being really quite active. Um, you know, kids come along and, and, uh, you start, uh, looking at, at doing different things and at the same time work tends to, to take over. And, um, like I, I travel a lot for work up and down the East coast, mainly in Australia. So it probably takes, um, anywhere from, you know, two or three days uh, a week or every other week. Um, until we've been locked down. Um, so, uh, yeah, so you kind of start um, been the can a little bit at both ends and um, I just I picked up a, a, a an ear infection. It was a, a viral ear infection so the antibiotics did nothing and um, it really affected my balance organs in my ear and I got really sick and, you know, I couldn't eat because it was like being on a roller coaster um, 24-7. And, uh, yeah, really lost about 10 kilos in about two weeks and, uh, was really quite nasty. Um, had ended up with Bell's palsy, half my face paralyzed, um, couldn't walk. That was another one. So, uh, yeah, had to go back to, uh, oh, how do we walk again? Um, so that, that, you know, from being a very fit and healthy, what I thought was healthy and what I thought was fit individual, uh, to, you know, just being completely broken just about, um, it really shocks you. Um, and so, uh, that, that was kind of like a, a really big wake up call for me. It really forced me to reevaluate everything I was doing. Um, and so, yeah, so I started to train, I guess, more purposefully and, and to be more committed because, um, you know, again, I wasn't getting any younger, you know, so, uh, I think that I just, just so seen the other side of 40 by that stage. And, um, yeah, so I, I found that um, that was a tremendously motivating factor. So, um, you know, getting up and, and working out really wasn't uh, an issue for me. Um, but I guess after about a year of trying to do stuff myself, even though I, I kind of knew a lot of, about health and fitness, I just, I just sucked at programming myself and you tend to program stuff that you like all the time. So, um, so when I found Gary's gym athlete, it, it just really clicked for me because it was a, a community of people who trained like I train, um, and I, I could really get into the, the science behind it. And, um, yeah, so for me, more than anything, it, it, it gives me, gives me sanity. Um, uh, especially, you know, if you've got young kids, you know, I, I, I get up early, uh, round about this time, it's 0500 over here at the moment. So, um, so it's go time. Um, if I don't do that, I, I, it just doesn't, it doesn't fit in the day. So, um, I think once you, once you kind of get through the initial six to eight weeks, it just becomes automatic. But, but also for me mentally, it, it, it becomes such a, a big thing in terms of, being able to have my own space and my own focus to, you know, just get away from the world occasionally. Um, so yeah, consistency is the biggest challenge for me was the travel um, and constant travel. So um, when people first start off, generally you want to do every workout exactly as programmed on every day and, and really freak out when you start to miss a few sessions. Um, I think one of the, the big learnings for me was uh, very early on was as long as you get in the work that you can do, you know, and for me traveling, um, I would, I would just sub with body weight stuff. It wouldn't be exactly, 
make up work, make, make up stuff on the weekends. If you if you miss uh, uh, meet yourself Saturday, it's it's not the end of the world. Um, but as long as you keep plugging at it, the the results do come. And you know, I, I've just been <laughs> blown away by the results that that have that have come along. And um, you know, they're still coming. PR is still coming, so it's really good. And that, that's what's awesome. And I think that should be really encouraging for everybody is the, just doing what you can, you know, like if, if you have to, like, I know that I, like sometimes things happen in my schedule to where I, yeah, I have to move days around or, you know, something like maybe, maybe a day got cut. And uh, on Saturday I have the decision on like, okay, you either do meet yourself Saturday or you do the the day that you like missed or had to move around or whatever. Um, and making those decisions you know, as long as you're still getting in the work most of the time, it results in something, you know, and you don't have to be perfect. And I think that should be really encouraging for everybody. Uh, what, you know, you're talking about results and, and we have, like I said, we have a, a lot on you, especially some stuff you've shared and just from, from things in the app as well. But like, what are some of the things that you're most impressed with results wise uh, that ha- you've seen over the last two years? Oh, Look, I think one one thing that really stood out for me, uh, probably more recently, was you know doing that that zone two Murph. Yeah. Um, the zone two stuff's it's fun. It's blowing people's minds. Um, <laughs> right. But um, I think I'm built for zone two. I don't know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, doing the, the zone two Murph and and um, you know I I, I kind of look at most of those um, meet yourself Saturday workouts now, and I, I can do them. I, I, I can do almost all of them. There's only one I can't do yet at competitor level. Um, and so you kind of go, Oh, okay. Zone two Murph. That'll be, that'll be almost fun. Um, so that, that is a kind of, I, I sort of think twice and go, well, wow, that's pretty amazing that I think, you know, because when I when I started, I, I couldn't do Murph. <laughs> I couldn't do it unvested. Um, it'd probably take me about an hour all up to, to do it. Um, couldn't do all the pull-ups. Um, and to, you know, I think like 52 minutes or something like that for a, for the Zone 2 Murph vested. Um, That's huge. And, just and then you can, got a and the great thing down. about being zone two is you you don't need a, a warm down. I just went and had breakfast and had coffee with the wife. And you know normally it takes me half an hour to pull myself together before I can <laughs> go and have breakfast. You know on a Saturday. So she's like, you know, what, did you did you just do a recovery thing today? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, smashed out a hundred pull ups. <laughs> like, oh, and you know, and. Two years ago, I, I would have just gone. There's no way you could do that stuff. So, you know, for me, that's that was that was a really big wow. And I know that Jared, you posted and just said, you know, this, think about it. That's that's really you know quite an achievement if you can do that in less than an hour. And I thought, yeah, it really is. That that was one that I thought, yeah, that's that's come a long way. Um, Two thousand meter row under seven minutes you can smash those out any time. Nice. Um, that's, you know, and being an ex rower, that's, that's very pleasing. Um, the deadlift's probably the, the, the big one. Um, I, I love lifting heavy. Um, so uh, I think it's, uh, it's currently 407. I think when I started, I think it was 330 in pound, 330 pounds. Um, nice. I think it just missed 418 on the last fit week. Kind of got it to mid shin, um, but I'll 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 uh, I'll crush it on the next one. So um, yeah, so that's that's still still everything's still progressing there for me. That's a big one. Back squats uh, still only about three fifty. I think I just missed three sixty last week. So that's another one there. I think you know one of the learnings I've got now is um, I only started lifting with a belt probably in the last six months, um, maybe 12 months. Um, and I just had a Velcro one, uh, and that's not cutting it anymore. So, yeah. uh, that's a, that's a, you know, I think once the, the weights start to get up there, yeah, just put it in the bin and, uh, get a proper belt. So, so I've done that. So I think we'll, we'll go up uh, a bit. I think little things like, um, 
I think that that you don't realize is is uh, things like that, things like my clean um, and the squat are completely rebuilt. So, you know, from when I started, I think let's say I started at about three hundred. Um, I tweaked my knee about six months in, and you know, had a had a look at the way I was squatting, and my my form wasn't great. Um, so I then took about six months to force myself to learn how to squat with really good form um, and change my squat setup and things like that. So um, those things make a really big difference, I think, um, for consistency as well, because I think, you know, particularly me, I'm, I'm 47 now. Um, you do get a few tweaks, especially uh, with the damage I've accumulated over the years. So, um, you know, for me, the, the big focus for consistency is really consistency and form. Um, particularly with those dynamic exercises because um, you know, at my age you have a little tweak when you're training that that might affect your training for the next two weeks so the the the, the risk and reward just doesn't stack up so um, yeah so for me so for me a lot of the the story is about how I've changed the way I lift and also changed the way I train I guess over time I think it was cool that you named three completely different things of that you improved in like the last two years, your lifts went sh- straight up and then you can still casually do a super intense medium distance row, which is not hard and not fun at all. And then <laughs> zone, and then zone two, which is just yeah. not even on people's radar, but getting a lot of work done at a lower intensity. Those are all very different things. So it's cool that, you know, staying, uh, good across the bar and improving across the bar as well, like across everywhere. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I can now do double unders. Uh, couldn't do double unders for forever. <laughs> just, I just, I just wouldn't do them. So I think you then start to force yourself to do those things and now I can do them and I can do lots of them. It's still not fun. I still don't like it, <laughs> I guess. I mean, if you look at probably the, the thing I've most improved on is, is my mile time. Um, but I hate running. So for me, I, I kind of don't, I don't see that as a massive achievement. <laughs> like, who but, cares um, if I've so, taken two and a half minutes off my run? Like it's. <laughs> well, it's more than that. I, I think, oh, yeah, what I is it? I, like, I, I don't have it pulled yeah, up. Because <laughs> I, because I, I never used to do lots of running. So, um, I just row, but, um, uh, so I think when I started my mile time was just like about nine minutes, um, over nine minutes. And now, now it's five, five fifty something. Holy crap. Um, That's crazy. That's a huge so, improvement. Huge, massive. But yeah, like I said, I think, well, I'm, I'm just not a good runner and I, I don't enjoy it. So it's like, well, yeah, that's okay. But, but geez, did you see the last deadlift I did? That was awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can run a sub six mile, but who cares about that? Look at this weight yeah. I'm about to crush. Yeah, that's right. That's incredible, man. I mean, to be honest, I, I just love, I just love your story because I think you really embody like everything that I'm trying to like preach to people is this like consistency over perfection, but still being smart about your training. Cause there's, there's another camp where it's like, it doesn't matter what you do, just be consistent. And that's not true. Like I grew up in gym no. communities, um, you know, worked at gyms for like really the, since I could get a job you know, like at 15, like I worked at gyms and like, you would see the people who never missed a day, but they're doing random exercises. And I'm not talking about cross. This is before CrossFit. Even it was a thing I'm talking about just like random, like we're going to do this machine today. And then maybe a little bit of the treadmill and they they're consistent. You seem consistent for like four or five years. It's like nothing's changed for you. And I'm not just talking about how you look, but like you're, you're not moving any faster. You're not lifting more weights. Like nothing is changing here. And like, if, if you just want to be healthy, I'm not throwing any stones. Like if, if you, if you're walking every day and and doing something, then that's great. But if you do want some of these performance things that we're talking about, because I truly think that's what makes people better and, you know, more ready for life and harder to kill all these things. But the the way you got there was not this like off the charts intensity. I'm going to crush it every single day. It was just consistency with that asterisk of with good form. You know, it's like, that's probably the biggest part of the, the entire thing. I try to stress th- that stuff in our, in the athlete briefs too. Like even with the dynamic movements, I like, I want you to move this weight as fast as you can safely. 
with good form, you know, like, and those are the things mm. I think are, are huge. And, uh, you've just, you embody like what consistency with a good program over a long period of time can, can really do. I think it's incredible. Oh, absolutely. I think the, the, the part of consi- I mean, consistency is around your training. And I think the thing that really changed the game for me, um, it took me about 12 months to work this out <laughs> by the way, um, is, is there's doing the work. Um, but the recovery is just as probably, you know, for me at my age, it's, it's more important. Um, and by recovery that also includes, you know, your fuels, you know, what you're eating. Um, you know, I, I, I think I plateaued probably about 12, 12, bit, bit over 12 months in. Um, and so I think, you know, I, I think just listening to one of the podcasts, you said, you know, go back and reevaluate your macros because you kind of assume that you're eating healthy, eat reasonably healthy or, you know, kind of make a point of doing that. And when I, when I actually went back and unpacked it all, it was, I was way under on protein, you know, consistently way under on protein. And I'm wondering why, you know, I'm tired, I'm sore, I'm cranky, you know, what's going on, you know, is it, you know, because you know, jobs have been a bit tough or, or, or whatever. No, it was, you know, I was, I was undernourished, <laughs> if it's possible, uh, relatively with the training. And, and um, hydration was a factor as well. It was all over the place. So that, dialing your sleep. Um, and as soon as I did those tweaks, I think, then, then a, you know, just hit another level. Um, but that's, you know, that, that's 100% it. You've got to be purposeful about your training. You can't can't go 100% all the time but you've got to really when you when you can you push it um listen to your body if you can't then then back off but dial in the recovery and the nutrition 100% and everything else starts to fall into place yeah i i mean i have almost the exact same story with cuz i mean i've i've focused on that stuff you know in more recent history but that's not always how it's been and i know going back you know i would have a like you you said i, I have a hard day of work. Uh, and then I would just be like done toasted at the end of the day, by the time I get home and I'm with my kids. And I just kind of thought that's how life was supposed to be. Like, it's like you worked really hard and like now you're, you have no mental capacity for your, your family and you feel like crap and all you want to do is go to sleep. I just kind of thought like, this is, this is how things are, you know? And then once I started to, I went from five hours of sleep a night up to eight hours of sleep per night and, you know, really focus on hydration and nutrition and stuff. Those things aren't really a factor at the end of the day anymore. You know, you don't, those things don't happen as much. Mm. Um, and it's really good to, to hear you say that too. I think just with your experience and how much, <clears throat> you know, training you've had and, and being an athlete and, and everything in, in between, I think that's, that's really awesome. So what are the goals now, man? What are you, uh, what are you after? That's a really good question. Um, Look, I think, I think last time I spoke to you, which was 12 months ago, um, I hadn't had a, a really fixed goal. The fi- fixed goal I have is I want to be able to deadlift 200 kilos. Um, I think I'll achieve that this year. I think all I need is another strength cycle and I'll do that. Maybe I'll do back-to-back ones like Craig Lewis and turn into a monster. Um, <laughs> might affect my mile times though. Good. It it's hard. It, but, uh, it, it becomes a, a balancing act. Yeah, I think that's that's probably just a just a singular goal um, there. Uh, I think you know mainly because a, a lot of a lot of you guys have got um, events and things that you're that you're training for. Uh, for me, it, that's not a not a factor. I like to plug a lot of time into my family because because of travel and things like that. So we can kind of become like that. So. Look, for me, I think um, I want to probably get a little bit stronger. That's my, my next, I guess, immediate goal. Um, and, and so, uh, but, uh, you know, I think I've got the, we've got the tools to do that. I think yeah, the, other, the other bits and pieces for me is, um, I guess, finding, finding uh, a, a different focus but, um, or, or a goal that, that um, probably drives me to, to another level but um i think when i spoke to you last you know my 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 goal is just to continue to improve because i i only do the the workout i don't do anything extra 
if you like. So I do the workouts during the week. Um, if I can, I'll do a, a meet yourself on the on the weekend. Um, but I don't I don't have the capacity really to do any extra at the moment. So um, and it's still improving. So um, I'm still still going hard there. I think once a once a top out, and I, maybe I'm getting close. I don't know. Um, then I'll then I'll pick a new goal. But but I've continually changed my focus over, over time as well. So, um, you know, I started off just doing harder to kill. I then worked out I needed to get stronger. I did the strength track, um, jumped in with VD because, you know, put on a bit of weight and then, you know, uh, went to shred, uh, and back to harder to kill. So I think I, it's almost an annual thing that I'll, I'll do a, a strength track um, as well because it just forces you to, to, to pick on a few different things like, you know, one cycle, it might be uh, the squat or, you know, I think the last last cycle I did um, Olympic lifting. I just wanted to teach myself how to clean properly because I just had never never really managed to do that. So clean and snatch. Um, so rather than doing meet yourself uh, on, on, the, on the Saturday, I would, I would just practice form and drills and, do some extra ollie work and that really, really improved that form and that makes a difference. Um, but yeah, no, aside from the, sorry, not one, 200, 200 kilos on the, on the deadlift. And, you know, by the end of the year, that's, that's probably what I'm aiming for. Yeah. I think that you'll, you'll get there. It's a very, uh, admirable goal. I think that with a, I don't know, sub 50, Zone two Murph, maybe because you're you said you're at 52 or 53, something like that. Yeah, somewhere around there. Could, yeah, could be. I think the the hardest part of that is, um, yeah, probably have to do more running. I, I can't, <laughs> right? I, I can only walk quickly with a vest on to stay in zone two. <laughs> yeah, um, hats off to anyone who can run in a vest and stay in zone two. I think that's um, that's amazing. Yeah, that's I mean, anything sub 60 is amazing. I think that's. That's a incredible man. That's a real, I it might be one of the best times we have in the community. Um, I don't, I haven't heard of anyone faster yet. Have you Joe? Oh. Not off my head. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, man. Well, let's, uh, let's rehash some of these, uh, the go-to questions, see if they've changed at all. What is the hardest workout you've ever done? Uh, currently there's lots, there's lots. It's, you know, it's that, that classic. It's the ones you're not ready for that will, absolutely spank you every single time um i still have cold sweats every time i review the program and you've booked in mile repeats mate um that's <laughs> hurt me so many times um particularly after doing you know de- you know deadlifts or something like that and just your legs don't work properly um no at the moment i think the hardest one um i've yet to do um is patriot um so is that the one meet yourself saturday that you said you it's can't one, do at competitive um, level. Okay. Haven't, haven't done yet. Does it done yet? Right. I've done it. I've not managed to do it at competitive level in the time cap. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That's but, I, but with it, with a twist, I think I could, I could probably smash it out with some ugly reps. Right. Um, but I, again, going to the consistency and, you know, this is one of the things, one of the drivers for me to kind of learn how to clean properly and do all that sort of stuff. Um, so every, every rep has to be a good rep. Um, so I'll, I'll know rep myself if it starts to get a bit shaky. Um, so yeah, I, st- I haven't managed to knock out a hundred good cleans in, uh, in that 30 minutes, hundred pull-ups, no problem. But, um, yeah, that's the, that's the limiting factor at the moment. Yeah. Those cleans, that's, that's no joke. And I mean, I've done, I've done that workout with a lot of people, um, I don't know why, but for some reason, that's probably the one I've done with other people the most. And it does, it gets really dicey for some people really fast. I'm like, Oh, you know, like I'm not necessarily the, mm. the coach in that situation. I'm just like, uh, even though it's my workout, it might be like amongst friends or something. And I, I try to chime in here and there, but like it's in the middle of a workout and you know what, whatever. And so like it, that one can get really ugly looking really fast. So that's, that's good yeah. on you for, for keeping the strict standards. Well, I think once the fatigue 
sets in, you know, that the last five minutes of that workout is, is a really good mental test. Um, not so much physically because you can keep pushing yourself physically, but mentally to keep your form, to keep the, the movement, you know, still relatively explosive, et cetera. I think um, that's, that's a tester for me. So yeah, that's, that's a, that's a fun one. I mean, aside from that, uh, broken arrow. Yeah. That's just, that's nasty. Um, especially if you really, really try to go hard because it's just a, a real grind. Yeah. And condition me to the grave. I think you crushed that one, right? Oh, I love that one. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> I th- well, you know why? Because, um, it's kind of like your Murph project, you know, I, I really sucked at, at, at running and, um, you know, and there's a lot of rowing in that one as well. So you got all the machines um, and my conditioning wasn't great. So it, it took me probably three goes before I could actually do it like as prescribed. <laughs> um, so that one really, really kicked my ass. And so it, it lit a fire for me to go, well, actually, and I think there was at, at one stage you said um, it was strength track. And I was like, well, what about, you know, extra conditioning. And you just said, well, um, well, you could just do, you know, on, on the Saturdays, you know, rather than doing the, the meet yourself, just, just to get condition me to the grave to get some extra conditioning. And maybe you said it as a joke, but uh, <laughs> I was going to say, Jared, what advice are you I giving? Get it at the time. I mean, I, I would do that. Time. So I did. So, so while I was doing strength track, um, you know, a bit like Craig Lewis, you know, doing strength and doing Murph every weekend, I was, I was doing condition me to the grave. Um, yeah. And I, I, I don't know. I, I just love that one now. It, it, it just, rather than having a like extreme pain, like a 2000 meter row, it just, yeah, it just exhausts you completely. And so by the time you finish, you just, you've got nothing left. You just lie on the ground for about half an hour. And just your legs go. Um, I just love that one. Yeah. yeah that one great. took me a, a year to do. And if I give anybody some advice like that, it's only a joke if you think that it is. Like, <laughs> if, if, I, if I say it to you and you're like, he's kidding, then okay, take it as I'm kidding. If you're like, I think I could do that, then I wasn't kidding. So it's, it's <laughs> whoever hears the advice, it's however you interpret my advice, whether or not it's a joke. Uh, I, it, it works. <laughs> I think it, and uh, look, those things, all of those things, you know, they, they, all that adversity, it helps your mental toughness. I think that's probably been the biggest thing. I think, you know, we sort of, you talk about, you know, what being harder to kill um, and, you know, being harder to kill is yes, ultimately it is about your, your health um, and, and fitness and your resilience and all of that sort of stuff. But um, it all starts between your ears. Um, and so, yeah, so I think, I think the biggest change for me looking back is to kind of go, you know, from being a person who would look at those things and just go, oh, wow, you know, I can't do those. That's just, that's impossible, you know. But now I kind of go, we well, of course can do it. You know, it's just another workout. You just get into it. So you set me up perfectly for my next question. In your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? Mm, I think last time... Look, I, I think the best activity, activity, any activity, any adversity, I think, builds your mental toughness. It's anything that's that's going to knock you on your ass, um, whether it be a serious illness. That'll you know coming through the other end and and getting better will absolutely build some mental toughness. You know, personal tragedies, all of those things, any kind of adversity. Well, I think you call it killing comfort. Mm-hmm. Um, that they always be build builds mental toughness. I think personally, though, the thing that's probably helped me most is um, is meditation. Um, it's helped me to become really mindful, uh, or more mindful, I should say, um, and that translates into your training as well. So, you know, we talked before about being purposeful in your training. You know, that's having a plan, being consistent, all of those things. But I think one of the things that that helps me enormously is to be really mindful, um, in my training. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think the meditation helps a lot. I think, you know, getting into your own head and, and, uh, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll 
make you much more resilient mentally. That's awesome. I think meditation is often overlooked as how much it can translate to the rest of your life. So I think that's a perfect illustration of that fact. Now, if you could only well, have one... workouts become a meditation, really, at the end of the day. Yeah, movement meditation, I think. Yeah. I, go, I agree with that. Once you're in the flow, I think, yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a good position to be in. I think you're in the right spot when you're getting that sense of flow. Now, if you could only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be, and has your answer changed? I flip-flopped, haven't I? Ket- kettlebell, sand... Everyone's kettlebell, sandbag, kettlebell, sandbag. <laughs> um... I th- I love I love the kettlebells. I've done kettlebell sports in the past. It's they're they're a lot of fun. But I still go with sandbag. I think um yeah, I think they're they're underrated. Uh, I noticed there's a there's a push for the, the sandbag track. One man, one sandbag. Oh, you could absolutely do that. Yeah. Um, that I mean surprisingly, so I always reach out to the community when, when these ideas come up because people, I, I get emails, people asking like, hey, you have a sandbag track or something like that. And when, when that first came up on the Endure track, I posted a poll in the group and I was like, hey, who would be interested in an endurance-based program here at Garage Gym Athlete? And we got a lot of votes for, absolutely, let's see it. And with the sandbag track, we put it in the group and it surprisingly wasn't necessarily well received you know it's like people wanted it not that people hate on sandbags they just thought it would be a better like accessory type thing or like yeah um so i was a little bit surprised so right now we've pressed pause on the sandbag track but uh one man one sandbag i'm not not holding back that could very well be a thing yeah i, th- I think they're fun um incredibly incredibly challenging yeah i've got a, a heavy sandbag um they 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 really test you you know the the dynamic weight i'm not a, i'm not a fan of the the hard sandbags so uh, you know sandbags got to have a bit of flex and movement in it that's the yeah. dynamic movement that's going to test you so the super heavy hard ones they're what well, you can use an atlas stone or something like that but um yeah a loose a loose heavy sandbag that's 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 lots of fun. Yeah, that's where it gets nasty real fast. So what about adding something to your gym? I don't know if you've made any additions since we've chatted, but uh, if you could add something now to your gym, well, what would be at the top of your list? Ooh, yeah, this is, this is another one. So I kind of – last big uh, purchase was, uh, was a power rack. Um, that definitely helped change the game, gave me a lot more confidence. Um, uh, I love that. Uh, one thing I learned was um, at uh, at six one, um, you really got to watch the height of those things. Uh, I think some of them aren't the one that I got, and I, I got it on special, of course, because I, I paying full price for any equipment. <laughs> um, so I had to build a little frame out of of rail sleepers to get it to the height that I wanted to get it. So that that was a bit of DIY fun. Um, so I got I got some farmers handles. They they are awesome. They are really really good. Um, so I kind of wait for the next, I'm waiting to get some more use out of that. Um, but I'll I'll try and throw them in there. So um, you know if we're doing sprints or something like that, I might load up the farmers handles and and do those for like a thirty on thirty off or something like that. It's just a different kind of stimulus. Um, it's only kinky the first time, Jake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, for what what next? Uh, I think for me, it, it it may be an upgrade of my ancient C model rower, um, or not even upgrade. I think I just need need to get the PM five monitor. Um, but um, but an Airdyne, I think, would be the next thing. I haven't got one of those, and everybody else does. It seems so. Um, yeah, that's the. That's the next next target. Nice. Awesome. All right, man. Well, there are a lot of garage gym athletes out there listening to this. What would your best advice for them be? Yeah. There, there's a lot. There's a lot you could say. Um, best, best advice I think um, that I got early on made a, a massive difference for me was the mobility stuff. Um, I guess it ties into recovery. Um, 
it's always programmed. Um, but but doing that, uh, doing your doing uh, mobility wad or rom wad or, or you know, there's a host of of really really good resources that are out there. Um, I think if you've got issues with uh, mobility, it's going to really impact your ability to get the most out of your training. And certainly that was the case for me. I had really uh, stiff shoulders and and bad knees and all of that sort of stuff. And um, I managed to iron out a lot of those kinks. Um, and again, that's it's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's something you've got to be really consistent about. Um, and I, I continue to, and it's not fun, um, but it will it will make a, a huge difference to your ability to train and also your ability to recover. That would be probably up there on my list. Awesome. Awesome, Al. Well, it's a blast having you on the on the podcast. I love catching up with you, just seeing how things are going. Seeing your progress is, is phenomenal, and I think, uh, I don't know, you're just a, you're a big staple here in the community, and you provide a lot of uh, – great advice throughout the entire conversation. So I really do appreciate you taking the time to do that. And uh, yeah, man, thanks for being around. Yeah, I love it. Um, thanks to you guys. I think the the community is, is absolutely fantastic. You know, um, you know, those days that are, that are tough, you know, I, I, I get a lot out of the community, you know, seeing guys, you know, what they're doing and um, how are they getting around things and what they're achieving is, you know, for me is tremendously motivating. It keeps me motivated. Absolutely. Every time, um, you know, Craig Lewis or Tony Allen or, you know, Chris Dinnell gets out there and posts a massive total, um, and, you know, getting pushed along by the likes of Trampus and all of the other guys in the OG forum, it's just, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. Thanks for listening awesome. to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, The Garage Gym Athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Thanks for listening.